Hello and welcome to this video on changes in entropy for reactions. By the end of this video you will be able to describe how the entropy changes with reaction, explain why the uh, standard entropy data is given as an absolute value, calculate the standard entropy of reaction at a reference temperature, and calculate the standard entropy of reaction at any temperature given available data. Reactions change entropy. They can change entropy in a few different ways. Firstly, uh, the heat they absorb or release will cause a change in entropy. They can either create or consume molecules. So if you're consuming molecules, A plus B goes to a single molecule, then you're reducing entropy. Uh, a, B goes to A plus B, you're increasing entropy. And by creating and consuming phases, so if you're reacting and going on to form a solid, you're reducing entropy, or if you're reacting some liquids and forming a gas, then you'll be increasing entropy. So if we look at the change in entropy for a reaction, and so we go back to an example that we did a little while ago, just combustion of methane, then uh, we can calculate a change in entropy. But how do we do this? So uh, again, we could just say that the entropy is just the difference in entropy between each of the components. This wasn't possible to do for enthalpy of reaction but what about entropy of reaction? And so to explain this or to, to expand on this, we go back to Boltzmann and his definition of, of entropy. And so from this, we get the third law of thermodynamics and that states that the entropy of all substances in their perfect crystalline state is zero at the absolute temperature of zero. Okay, so, so there's only one state that we can exist in, so therefore entropy is zero. Now given that we start at with an entropy of zero at a temperature of zero, in principle we can calculate what the entropy is at 298 degrees Kelvin. So in the previous video we talked about calculating changes in entropy from one temperature to another. So if we know that the entropy is zero at zero degrees Kelvin, then we can calculate what the entropy is at 298 degrees Kelvin. And there are some other techniques for doing this as well. So you can use spectroscopy and that sort of thing to, to calculate entropies. Now, um, so, so the difference here between enthalpy and entropy is that enthalpy, it's a heat of formation. For entropy, it's an absolute value of entropy at the standard state. And our definition of standard state still applies. We still have to specify the pressure, the state, and the purity or the concentration. Okay, so, so in this table here we've got a pure substance. Uh, it's in the state specified or in the phase specified I should say. And it's at a pressure of one bar. So to calculate my uh, standard entropy of reaction, then I'm using my standard entropies from the table. And then I'm just summing them up with the stoichiometric coefficient. And so what I get is my general equation uh, down the bottom, where my standard heat of reaction is the stoichiometric coefficient times by the absolute entropy for that component. Now Hess's law can be applied to entropies of reactions just like Hess's law can be applied to enthalpies of reaction. Then if we look at how the entropy changes with temperature, the steps in doing this are essentially the same as calculating uh, changes or the delta H of reaction for different temperatures. So uh, because entropy is a state function, 
we can use any path to get between two state functions and so if you're wanting to calculate the entropy of reaction away from your reference temperature then you need to follow a path okay so in this case uh, carbon monoxide plus oxygen going to carbon dioxide uh, and I'm interested in a thousand degrees Kelvin then I take a step to go to 298 Kelvin okay so that's a, an entropy change for a temperature change and then my second step is my entropy of reaction at 298 Kelvin where I have the tabulated data and then my third step is heating my product from 298 Kelvin to 1000 degrees Kelvin and so my heat of reaction is just the sum of these three steps exactly the same as the type of method we were using for enthalpies of reaction so if we look careful at carefully at the last equation then uh, what we can get is we can say well the the entropy change for any temperature is the entropy change at my reference temperature plus the sum of the uh, CP on T's uh, and integrating them from T1 to T2 now this is for no phase change only if we have a phase change then we need to account for that as we discussed in the previous video so to recap what we've covered in this video the entropy of reaction is a function of the energy released or consumed the moles produced or consumed and the phases produced or consumed by the reaction the uh, the standard entropy of reaction can be calculated at a reference temperature from absolute values of standard entropy absolute values of standard entropy are possible due to the third law of thermodynamics where we know that the entropy uh, is zero the standard entropy of reaction can be calculated at any temperature using a path in the same way as we've done previously for enthalpies of reaction thanks for your time